Hello, good day and greetings one and all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. Last time, those very two sackbirds within that truck, accompanied by this fella on the ground and the other one behind that pillar, decided to die and succumb. However, as you can hear, combat music once again started to play, which means there must still be more hostile alien forces within the area. So far things have been going rather well, except of course Booyah over here getting shot once. Still though, I was expecting a little bit more of a challenge, considering that we are playing on classic difficulty. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't ask for too much though, after all that could result in our entire team dying quite horribly. Who's got some units left to spend? Ragzeal is all out from shooting that alien, Booyah is exhausted as well, huh, Lamia could change her very position. Also, why am I moving the camera about like this? I can simply push the WASD keys, alrighty. Hmm, where could the remaining aliens be and how many are there? Perhaps close to this very transporter? Anything is possible. Hmm, since Booya or I think yes Rex Zeal, since he can look over here, I think it wouldn't be a big problem to move Lamia behind this truck the truck that had the two aliens inside. Lamia, be brave, you can do this, I believe in you. Alrighty then, so far so good. Activate. You can't really activate Overwatch, eh? Or can you? Hm. You cannot move and fire this weapon in the same turn. Ah yes, of course, if you activate Overwatch, you still need to be able to shoot, but Lamia moved already, therefore, okay, hunker down at this then. Bring it on, alien scum, wherever you are hiding. So here we go once again. And we didn't spot a single thing. They are once again moving about very carefully. Oh, are you intimidated? Are you scared because we already took out a few of your pals? Well, you should continue to feel frightened. Alrighty then, let's see. What do we got over here? I think there's a structure that has come into view. Hmm, could be a car also. Well, there's only one way to find out. Booyah, be brave and not shy once again. Aha! Two more sectoids decided to come into view. Oh, you bloody bastards. You stay away from those bodies if you know what's good for you. Well, you're gonna die either way, but you know, if you want to enjoy living a little longer, one's behind the appetizing board and the other one behind a taxi. Also, am I really seeing this? Ladies and gentlemen, look, an actual petrol pump. It looks a little bit more like the classic design unlike this little pillar here. What are these supposed to be? Well, I suppose there's a rather logical explanation. Trucks are huge, especially if they're accompanied by their containers, hence why they wouldn't fit under a normal petrol station, they'd use up too much space. Hence why they have these little extra parking areas to fuel up their vehicles. Okay. As exciting as all of that sounded though, it has little to nothing to do with XCOM and Buya is getting an itchy trigger finger. Hmm, are you perhaps in grenade throwing range? Darn, you can't throw it far enough and whoa, the camera is moving all over the place, darn it for being so fast. Booya? Stay? Hmm, well actually, let's see. 45% chance to hit. Hmm, also 45. I think I'm gonna let you stay in overwatch for now. Because I do have a plan for the next turn. Next up, Zeal. Can you see anything? Not yet, I could move you on top of this very thing, Imajiggy. But if I do that, both of them might be able to get in a shot. Is anybody at all within range? What about you, Larry? Hmm. Moving you in just a little closer shouldn't hurt. Then again though, it is going to be a risky move. Oh sigh, everything needs to be so strategical. Well, it is XCOM, of course. Lamia. We need to bring your humble self into a better position, but where to? Hmm. Wait a second, I wonder, could I perhaps move her on top of these very crates next to her? Hmm, if that works out, then maybe? Would she be able to? Actually, I don't think that is possible. Hmm, how to approach this situation? Well, Booyah is waiting, alright. Zeal? Hmm, I am a little afraid of these trucks, cause they might decide to blow up. I'm gonna move you up here for now, good sir. 
Hopefully that will not trigger any reaction fire. Oh, this might have been my most foolish of moves yet, because one of my team members might die, Rex Zeal being the one. However, it may actually be worth it. Ooh, and you actually have a... Wait a second, really? How is that possible? The alien over there is further away, but you have a 65% chance to hit it. However, this one only a chance of 45, but it is closer. Hmm. Maybe it is because... Because, very good question, because of the very edge of that container. However, there's a pillar right in front of that alien. <gasps> you know, just... I don't even care how little sense it makes. Ragzeal, go for those 65% and hope for the best. Yes, yes, quite, quite. <laughs> ha! Yes! Very well done! Ragzeal, already your second kill of this mission. I am proud. And we are owning those sectors, alright? Only one more to go. Of course, I still shouldn't get cocky and underestimate the situation. But I am also not going to hide my happiness. Now then. I wonder if I should try to flank that bugger with Larry. So far, the aliens didn't really decide to throw grenades, which is a good thing. In the original XCOM, they threw those bloody things right off the bat and annihilated entire teams of rookies. Larry, be brave once again. Go for it. Next turn, you will try to take out that alien. Last but not least, Lamia. I think I can move you in a little closer as well. There's nothing else to threaten your life. Hmm, say, I wonder if this could actually work out. Huh, I wonder. Lamia, you also still own a grenade. Can you perhaps... You could actually. Darling, can you make a sprout one more time? Yes, then go for it. Blow that fucking bastard the hell up. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Yeah! <laughs> Jesus Christ, one and all, did you see that? I have no idea how Lamia managed to pull off that grenade throw. Like, she stepped away from the very corner of this truck, but the grenade didn't fly out of her hand. She... she freaking loved that thing without even holding it. Like, the very grenade flew out of the air. As if she... as if she teleported the grenade via her mind into the air next to her to then throw it via telekinesis. Am I making any sense? Ladies and gentlemen, Operation Forgotten Dream was a complete success. Aliens killed six, operatives lost zero. Rating excellent. Oh, this is still so alien to me. Having lost no operatives whatsoever, that kind of thing didn't happen in the original. You lost at least, I'd say, three to four rookies per mission, at least in the early game, and now there's nobody gone at all? I'll have to grow used to that. If the difficulty should be too easy, I guess we can always switch to impossible, but maybe I should try to calm down a little and not judge over the very game before, you know, encountering more troublesome situations. Oh well, for now, let us simply return to base. <sighs> American citizens, it was a truly delightful stay within your continent. Bought some American milk, also some American eggs, went sightseeing, and blew those alien bastards the fuck up! Yeah! Well, now we're back home. Oh, I've missed the safety of my very neo sanctuary so much. To the situation room. Commander, to the situation room. <sighs> Alright, listen. Situation room? That is a new one, I am interested for sure, but I only just got back. See, I used to be a commander of XCOM, went to Mars, came back alive, now I am an old man. Literally, overseeing missions takes time. Do you need to throw this at me all of a sudden? I am not prepared. One second. First, I would love to take a quick look at the mission results, thank you very much. Therefore, let us get to it. Apparently, three soldiers have been promoted. Congratulations, Larry and the Mage, Lamia Bizubi once again, and Rag Zeal. Awesome. However, it seems that they have also been auto-assigned to certain classes. 
Oh, this is where things get a little awkward. Ladies and gentlemen, quite a few of you within the very comments stated that you wish to become a certain class upon getting promoted. However, it seems that the game auto assigns classes. Yes, 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 situation room in a second. Therefore, if you can't become what you desire to become, like, say, a sniper, for example, I am sorry, it is not my fault, simply the way the game works. Now then, let's take a look at the promoted soldiers though. Larry and the mage, you have become a assault soldier. Congrats. Lamia Bisbee has been promoted to a corporal. Amazing. And Rag Zeal became a support soldier. Sadly, Booya didn't get promoted and he is also in the hospital for six days. But you served as a trustworthy scout and we will always remember your deeds. Now then, let's get down to promoting. The class serves as our front line. They're the first ones into a fight and the last ones out. Well, 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 Larry, did you hear that? You have become the very first and last of the line. Also, new training available, run and gun. Okay, congratulations, Larry. Missions 1, kills 2, HP plus 1. And you have earned yourself this delightful ability. Run and gun allows firing or overwatch after dashing on the turn. Run and gun is activated. Two turn cooldown. Congratulations, good sir. Make good use of that, you delightful red soldier, you. Next, Lamia Bisbee. Good day, darling. Missions two, but already scored five kills. I am so proud of you, darling. So proud indeed. And has she actually become a corporal? Darling, you have become a corporal. I, I I don't even know. This this is so amazing. I am so very proud of you. Commander and by achieving that room. Commander to the situation room. I'll be there in a second. By achieving this, you've also earned yourself new abilities, eh? Well we can choose one of two. Let's have a look at this, shall we? Corporal abilities. Number one, snapshot. Removes the sniper rifle's restriction on firing and overwatch after moving. Any shots taken suffer a twenty percent aim penalty though. Hmm. Let me think about this for a second. Removes the sniper's rifle's restriction on firing and overwatch after moving. Sounds rather lovely, but minus 20 to aim? I don't know if I can live with that. What is this one about? Squad sight. Allows firing at targets in any ally's sight radius. Seriously? But what if there is something in the way? So let's say that um, somebody sees something but there is something in the way, like between her and the target, but only because her teammate can see it, she would be able to shoot it as well? Hmm. Which would be the smarter move here? Allows firing at targets in any ally's sight radius. Hmm. Sounds like a cheap technique, however, I am not exactly sure what it does. Maybe I am understanding this all wrong. Hmm. One second. I didn't want to select that yet. Snapshot removes the sniper's rifle's restrictions on firing and overwatch after moving, but she will take a permanent minus 20 to aim penalty, eh? Hmm. I think I'd like to keep Lamia more in the background. I don't really want her to storm in there. Therefore, being able to fire without moving or after moving isn't really necessary. Lamia. Why don't you go with squad side for now? Allows firing at targets in any ally's sight radius. Yes, this sounds delightful. Congratulations. There we go. Lamia Bisbee, the corporal. I am so proud. Last but not least, rookie Rag Zeal. New training, smoke grenade. Beautiful. And you have also become a squaddy good sir, congratulations, missions won but already scored two kills. I am proud of you, yes I am proud of you indeed my beautiful purple soldier. Now then, with all of that said and done, Booya, I am so very sorry, no promotions for you, but you'll get your chance as well, I promise. Ah, and of course we have earned ourselves a little something else as well, the spoils of war, six sectite corpses and six weapon fragments. Where are those objects slash bodies stored anyway? I'd like to find out.
Aha. Operation Forgotten Dream, Council Transmission. The XCOM squad deployed to United States has successfully stopped the alien abduction in Los Angeles. United States is deeply grateful for your help and hopes that these rewards will be of use to the XCOM project. Plus 200 credits. Also, panic in United States has decreased by one. However, panic within Africa and Asia has increased. Yes, I know, I know. I knew that was going to happen, but... I I just didn't want to throw my rookies into a difficult mission without any special abilities or combat experience, you know. We can help out the other countries eventually. I'll keep them in mind. I will definitely. We will be in touch, Commander. Of course we will. Whoever the hell you're supposed to be, mystery man. We will be in contact indeed. Now then, welcome back to base, ladies and gentlemen. And we have earned ourselves 200 credits. Now we have a total of 340. That is delightful. By now it is the 3rd of March. 5 a.m. in the morning. About 6 more days until the alien materials have been researched. Awesome. Next. Now then, let's see, what am I going to take care of first now that we are back at the base? Well, there is something going on within the situation room, eh? I am going to check that out. Could be important. Every member of the council is going to want satellite coverage. So we should plan our deployments carefully. Ah. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I was wondering when the very game would confront us with this new aspect of XCOM. May I welcome you all to the world map slash situation room. This is how it works. XCOM can launch satellites into the very atmosphere to basically oversee the activities within other countries slash continents. And by having satellites above those, we can increase their, well, security pretty much and they will feel less paranoid about the alien invasion also and we'll monitor that contact but i don't think it's related to the ufo activity receiving who um contact alien activity what well, thanks for the interruption, Bradford. In any case, as I was saying, these very bars pretty much represent how much countries and continents are putting their faith into the XCOM project. And the higher they go, the more that very location is panicking. And if they panic too much, well, as you can see, there's another bar at the very top here, and each country that leaves the XCOM project will fill out one of these little squares. And if the entire bar fills up, well, it's gonna be game over. The XCOM project will be shut down and the aliens will win. We cannot let that happen. I do have to wonder though, what's going on within the very world besides alien activity anyway? Merchants in Nigeria profit from growing alien concern. Demand for emergency supplies and weapons grows. Hey, it wasn't my fault. I had to make a decision. God damn it. Purported alien abduction in the United States stopped by a mysterious. Nothing military. to report at the moment. Boards are clear. Yeah. Operatives equipped with advanced weaponry. Can you really call our assault rifles and frag grenades all that advanced? <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the kind words though. Next up, official Chinese media outlets report that alien sightings and other unusual activity are the work of subversive elements. Is that so? What do they mean by that? Brightly colored lights seen over Cairo are believed to be the result of low-flying aircraft, not aliens as originally reported. Wait, 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 is this a conspiracy? Some Indian villagers now believe the aliens were sent to Earth as a warning against current government policies? Seriously? We are trying to save this fucking planet, and now they are putting the blame on us? Some odd transmissions lately. Some nut calling himself Commander Straker has been all over the news ranting about shadow operatives. <laughs> well, that's delightful. They are calling us shadow operatives, eh? Yes, of course, we are the bad guys. The big bad axe come, of course. The aliens didn't start shit. I, I, I just can't believe this. Yes, we are a top secret government project, but, you know, just fuck this system. What else can we do in here? Let's see. Pending requests, eh? Fulfill pending council requests. I'd like to fulfill council requests, but currently there are none. <laughs> Clicking on this doesn't seem to do anything. Nope. Next, visit the Grey Market, eh? Sell recovered alien artifacts to the council members' nations. Mm -hmm. Let's check this out, shall we? Several members of the council have expressed an interest in acquiring some of the artifacts we've recovered. However, we should be careful in choosing what items we release. 
The research team may not have discovered their true value yet. <laughs> well, isn't that original? The grey market, get it? Because the sectoids, they look a little like the Roswell aliens called greys. Grey market? Oh, it's a great joke! Let's see what do we got here. 12 sectoid corpses. Sectoid cadavers exhibit very little decomposition, though after a while they begin to give off an unpleasant chemical odor. How delightful. Also, weapon fragments. Based on our experience in the field, it seems the alien weaponry is designed to self-destruct when the can't operator have them dies. Back alien body parts as souvenirs. It's a breach of protocol. Listen, Bradford, if one of my freaking soldiers decides to bring home a severed alien head, that is their fetish and problem, not mine. Well, the corpses are only worth five credits anymore, no longer twenty thousand. Who'd want to buy those anyway? Commander, the artifact we're about to sell to the council hasn't been examined by the research team. I'm sure Dr. Volland would be disappointed if we put financial gains ahead of our own research and development. By all means, does disappointed equal that she wouldn't be able to enjoy the act of cutting open the cadaver with her scalpel? Oh, Dr. Vellan, science confuses me at times. What about XCOM finances? View monthly expenditures and incomes. Alright. Hmm. Gross monthly income, 175 credits. Facility maintenance, minus 25 per month. Craft maintenance, minus 60 per month. Therefore, net monthly income, 90. At the moment everything is going alright, I say, I presume. Therefore, as long as we do not overdo ourselves and spend too much, guess we should enjoy it while it lasts. Everything is gonna be alright. Next up, the final point of this very menu, launch satellite. Begin monitoring UFO activity in a new country by expanding XCOM satellite coverage. Well, Egypt, Nigeria, India and China aren't all that happy, which is worrying, therefore maybe I should launch a satellite? How does it work? Keys to satellite deployment. Expanding our satellite coverage is crucial to intercepting alien craft and maintaining the support of the Council's members' nations. First, deploy satellites to gain monthly funding from XCOM Council nations. Second, monitoring countries on the same continent will greatly increase the monthly rewards granted by that continent. If every country in a continent is monitored by XCOM satellites, an additional continent-specific bonus will be granted. Number three, we will need interceptors deployed to continents in which we have satellite coverage. Interceptors can be hired and transferred through the hangar facility. Alrighty then. So how exactly do we... I still don't understand why the aliens would be willing to go to all this trouble. What could they be after? A very good question indeed, Bradford. What exactly are the aliens after this time anyway? See, I once had this extremely weird acid trip induced dream about how aliens came to Earth in order to awaken their old Cthulhu-like god slumbering at the bottom of the ocean. Thankfully that was only a nightmare though. So how exactly does the satellite coverage work? Hmm. Africa, for example. One satellite plus one engineer per month, I see. Two satellites plus one scientist and one engineer. Three satellites, blah 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 blah. Bonus all in. Aha. So you can still gain access to the very continent bonuses from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And currently we only have one satellite in orbit above Germany. Increases our credits by plus 100 a month? Could be. And I assume this is the very mechanic for every single continent. Just different bonuses. The engineering team is doing some tests right now that could be disruptive. I'm going to alert the staff as a precaution. <sighs> as long as they don't break any of the expensive machinery, it is fine with me. Speaking of disruptive work though, that reminds me of how I used to part-time at that one laboratory. What was the city's name again? Can't remember. Well, one day there was a chemical spill and I didn't want to get into any trouble so I left immediately without a word. Next day, the city got nuked for some peculiar reason. That was definitely a strange day. Let's just hope we can keep the people in those cities calm. The last thing we need is outright chaos. I agree, Bradford. The last thing we'll need is chaos, definitely. Hence why I am now going to launch a satellite into the very atmosphere, for I do not enjoy the tension rising within India, Nigeria and etc. Away from the situation room for now and next up, let's head to engineering. So, Dr. Shen, we are in need of a satellite. 
we did earn ourselves a little bit of cash. Therefore, it shouldn't really be a big crime to spend 100 credits on this piece of technology. Acquired Engineers 5. Hmm, I wonder, will these engineers at all be used up or do they simply influence the required amount of time? Let's see. Project duration 20 days. Oh, that is gonna take a while. Project cost 100 notes to reduce the cost of items, acquire more engineers. So if we had more engineers, this wouldn't cost 100. Can I wait that long though is the question. We are in need of another satellite, desperately. Hmm. What to do, what to do. Let's see, first of all, one thing I'd like to know. The very med kit we used up during that last mission, is it like gone forever? Like gone completely? I want to find out. Let's see. Within the very barracks. Can, for example, Corporal Lamia Bisibi equip a med kit? Hmm, I can no longer see it. However, I do believe a tree with apples should still have a med kit, since we gave him one some time ago. Uh, ah, there we go. So if you use a med kit, it is used up and gone permanently. I will need to keep that in mind. Med kits are quite important though, therefore... Hmm... Should I make another one? Maybe. Uh, 25 though, I really don't want to waste all of my money, but it may be important. Since the duration is immediate, let us produce one more med kit just to be on the safe side. There we go. Next up. Hmm. Should I buy another satellite already? Should I manufacture one is the question. Before I make this very decision, I am also going to take another look at going to take another look at hmm, well in all honesty. Back to engineering for a second. What about build facilities? I may not do it right away yet, but I do want to have a little bit of an idea as to what I am gonna do soon. Excavating this area is only about 10 credits, that isn't too bad. But we do have more caves available over here. So what could we actually build? What about the satellite uplink? What does it do anyway? Required to build 5 power, 10 engineers, something we do not have, and 150 credits, that is... That is very expensive indeed. Hmm. With a signal monitored by a team of engineers, each satellite uplink is capable of receiving transmissions from two XCOM satellites. Haha, uh -huh, I see. So we can't simply launch more and more satellites into the air. We will also be in need of more satellite uplinks if we want to <coughs> maintain them all. Power generator? Well, currently we still have 8 more power units available. And since there don't seem to be any other available buildings, perhaps for the moment we don't really need to build anything new. Hmm. Alright then. Whoa, what the hell? Access lift, eh? Aha, uh -huh, I see. So if you want to build stuff that is located down here, you will need to expand the very access lift in the middle. How expensive is it anyway? Time to build. ETA. 5 days, project cost 2 power, 50 credits. Maintenance on this facility will cost 10 credits every month. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't really want to go deeper yet, and I also do not have the need of a second or first power generator. Therefore, the question now is, should I spend I'm my money... a hard time grasping what it is the aliens are hoping to accomplish here. Are they studying us? Why abduct humans seemingly at random? There must be a pattern that we haven't established yet. Well, as much as it would be interesting to figure out what exactly the aliens are after, I don't really care at the moment. They are killing us and we will need to kill them. Simple as that. We can worry about why the hell they are after our very planet as soon as we have grown a little in terms of technological advancement. Well, there's nothing new going on within the research labs. Still six days until the alien materials are done. What to do now, though? What to do, what to do indeed? Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do? Should I build another satellite? It's gonna take 20 days, which is a long time, but if we start now, we will be able to finish it before the end of the month. And like that, we will be able to 
we will be able to help out more civilians. Hmm. Let me think about this. So let's see. If I could build another satellite, I would probably launch it over the African continent since there's so much fucking trouble going on there. Okay, this is not what I wanted. Like freaking Africa is on the verge of war. Not only Africa, but Asia as well. And China. Like especially these two continents, Asia and Africa. They are complaining a whole lot. They want more protection and they are starting to spread rumors. Can you believe it? Those people actually believe we are responsible. They think we are the very ones attacking the planet? For a while. They're testing some potentially dangerous new equipment down there. Potentially dangerous new equipment, eh? Such as the medkits? Oh my gosh, no, we're under attack. The satellite has become self-aware and he is using medkits to destroy us all. Okay, calm down, TSC. Calm down indeed. At least we helped out America, and that is a good thing. But we can't really help out anyone else at the moment. Hmm. Perhaps I should simply try to take care of a few more missions by, you know, observing the very globe before doing anything else. What's going on within the barracks? Okay, I have an idea. See, first of all, there is still the amount of females in here. Not that I have anything against female soldiers like Hoda Shazad, but most of my audience members want to have male soldiers, therefore she is only wasting space. I am sorry, my dear, but you are going to get dismissed. I am sorry, but we do no longer need you, Hoda Shazad. Please, make space for... Well, in all honesty, maybe I should be careful, because... Because I don't know how expensive it is to hire new soldiers. I wouldn't want to run out of them. Let's see. Hire rookie soldiers. We haven't really taken a look at this yet. Let's do it. Aha. Wow, do you see this? Barracks capacity 99. Oh, this was an entirely different chapter within the original XCOM. There, you constantly had to freaking build living quarters and you would always reach your limit due to scientists and additional engineers and blah 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 blah. Here, we simply have the capacity of 99. <laughs> well, at least this means I'll be able to recruit plenty of people. But it doesn't seem like I can decide what I want to hire, like male soldiers or female soldiers, let us say. Matter of luck, a 50% chance. Oh well, I guess I'm gonna recruit one more soldier for now simply to test it out. Therefore, one more. Welcome to XCOM, you bloody fool. You've been picked at random. Now enjoy your stay. There we go. So, who is the new one? Hello, you perhaps? Hyung Jung Choi. What a strange name indeed. Or. Is the new soldier not yet at the base? Will he need to require some time before he actually arrives? Like, this is another female. Hmm. Well, I suppose there's not yet another new number here. We dismissed one from 12 to 11, but we didn't gain the 12 back yet, so when will the new soldier actually arrive? I see, I think I see. Barracks capacity, it says 13 here, but we only have 11 soldiers, right? I am a little confused right now. <laughs> maybe, maybe the very UFOpedia can tell me more. Oh, or maybe not. Look down here, I am blind. Next event, new soldier will arrive at XCOM HQ within three days. That is beautiful. Well, I'd say for now there's really nothing else we can do other than, you know, other than take care of our soldiers. Let's see if there's anything new to take care of. Hmm, not really. Several people are still gravely wounded. The flying fish, frozen foxy, oh, booyah, even you. Well, since we have this very soldier here from uh, this country, I think it is Korea. We might as well change her up a little. This is gonna be the very final of today's episode and I do have an idea for her. A very good idea indeed. Let's customize this soldier, shall we? Let's see, is that everything? Voice, head, skin color, yes I'd say this is it. Alrighty then. A singing bird has been reborn as well. And sadly there's nothing we can do with her since she is still a rookie, but oh well. You can't have everything at the very beginning. 
However, I don't really need to assign this new medkit yet. We'll do that upon beginning the next mission. However, can I perhaps find out more about this very assault rifle here? Come on. Aha. Uh -huh. The assault rifle and its variants are the only primary weapons XCOM rookies can use. Why? Can't you give them something a little bit more powerful? Are they not worth it? Well, I suppose it is a waste of money? <laughs> Remember, rookies, for each one of you who dies, we will kill five of them. Yes, when has that kind of thing ever given anybody confidence? I can also tell that these three points of base damage will not always be enough against sectoids, sure. But what if we ever encounter something heavier like... Mutants, if they are back as well. Mutant buddy! <laughs> I wish. And with all of that set and taken care of, ladies and gentlemen, we now have a fully customized list of soldiers. Now all we need to do is wait for new arrivals. And with all of that said and done one and all, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say we have reached the end of another episode. Therefore, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all again next time, when we'll return with Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. I am your humble host, the Shadow Cookie. Again, thank you all for watching, signing out for now.